Well, hello again, uh, YouTube, and uh, I'm going to be tying today uh, the sexy waltz worm. You can see it here in the vise. Uh, this one is uh, a size 16 uh, with a, a 2.8 uh, millimeter uh, copper bead. That's a tungsten uh, slotted bead uh, going onto that jig hook. So um, we'll go ahead and get started, but uh, before we do, just want to uh, thank everybody for uh, support of the, the Trout Strike site. Uh, we are uh, working on getting content on that. I'm really trying to build that up uh, at a pretty quick pace. It's, it's amazing to think uh, I really only started the site, uh, well, I started it in my mind years ago, but um, really just in June, I think, was the first post. Um, so we're greatly getting up there and uh, I'm trying to document uh, all of my fishing trips and really trying to, to create some content. So um, the last video, I tied up a bunch of mop flies. So I'll show those to you. I don't know how well you can see them here. But um, when you buy flies uh, from Trout Strike, I usually package them. Uh, nothing worse than, than buying flies and then they come packaged and and they're all taped up and and you're kind of excited to get them and and the packaging just looks terrible um so i i, I try to design a, a nice little uh bag for them to come in this, these are the mop flies the last video i put out was was on the mop fly so this is an order of a dozen mop flies uh it's got the logo back there it's got troutstrike.com and then on the back i always put the pattern the hook size and and the bead size so um i do tie these in individual uh, sell flies by the dozen um and then i also sell the the boxes as well so um we're going to get started uh with the the sexy waltz worm uh this is just one of about a million different variations of a waltz worm uh, I, I tie it a couple of different ways, uh, and I'll explain that. You, there's so many different variations, but uh, I thought this would be a good one to do a video on because uh, this is a pretty popular one. Um, I'm sure everybody knows about the waltz worm. Uh, the sexy waltz worm really is just a waltz worm uh, with a little bit of flash put into it. So uh, we're going to get our hook into the vise here. Again, that's a size 16 with a 2.8 uh, millimeter bead. This would be my, what I would consider my uh, medium size fly in my box. And uh, you don't normally see me add a lot of bulk with my thread, um, but I do like with a, uh, with a waltz worm, I like to build just a little bit of a taper, not much. Um, and uh, I bring it down there so you can see just a little bit of, of taper in, in the thread. Now, I am going to keep, uh, I'm not going to snip this off, and sometimes I forget just out of habit and snip it. Uh, but when I can remember, I do leave that on, and I'll put that back, and I'll show you why uh, in a minute. So, again, we are using, I forgot to tell you the thread. It, this is UTC 70 denier and tan. Uh, you can do this in a variety of colors. Uh, sometimes I'll do it in orange if I want to put a hot spot up there. Uh, but today we're just going to use tan. And then uh, the body, uh, we're going to be using Wapsi Natural Fur and, and Light Hairs Mask. Uh, you, can, you can create waltz worms in just about any color dubbing that you can find. Um, I had some good success this weekend uh, on, on, a, on a waltz worm that I had made out of some ginger hackle. Uh, with an orange hot spot and uh, did, did, did really well uh, on a big tailwater in, in upstate uh, Pennsylvania uh, with that fly. And, and that one I had a big 4.0 bead on there because uh, I knew I was going to be fishing in heavy current. Uh, so anyway, if you hear a cricket in the background, that is, that is not uh, any type of sound effect. I actually have a cricket uh, in my basement. I don't know where it is. He's in the wall or somewhere. He's been kind of driving me nuts. But anyway... Um, We'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Now, for the ribbing material, uh, I use two different things. Um, one of the things I use is this uh, Sulky uh, in, in silver metallic. Um, I do find that uh, is a little bit more of a subtle, uh, and sometimes it gets buried in the hair's mask and you don't really see it too well. Uh, and then uh, I'll also use the opal uh, tinsel from uh, UTC, the Mirage tinsel. It's a little bit thicker, it comes through a little bit better so I'm going to use that one today mainly so it shows up in the video uh, so 
again i i've gotten started here i've tapered uh i've keep keep a nice flat thread i've tapered it down and then i've left this back because i'm going to do the counter ribbing uh with that piece there so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab uh grab some of this and uh again uh in my last video i kind of globbed some dubbing on there with the uh with the uh, uh with the junk flies there um with the mop fly but now i'm going to be back to saying less is more um, and i really strive here to get a uniform noodle uh, some people will try to start it thin and then and then make it thicker um, to get that taper i try to put a little bit of taper into the into the thread base and uh, i just find working with a, a very thin uniform uh, noodle helps me uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm just going to take tiny little bits of the dubbing and I'm just going to kind of dirty up the thread with it, but I'm going to try to stay uniform. I don't want to get it too big uh, in the middle, anything like that. I just try to try to take my time. Um, this is one of the most important skills if you're a beginner tire, uh, learning how to dub. Uh, you might want to keep, I do keep some moisturizer. Um, down here uh, just to keep my fingers kind of moist I try to not lick my fingers um, it, it, sometimes I'll have a wet paper towel um, just out of habit I'll catch myself sometimes uh, licking my fingers but with these materials um, there's warnings all over these materials so I, I, I try to try to not get the materials in my mouth at all possible especially with the number of flies that I tie so um, I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than that probably going to need about a, a, a two and a half to three inch noodle just to make sure you have enough uh, dubbing in there and then um, I've got that done I'm going to slide that down now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cut a piece of this uh, I'm going to cut a piece of this tinsel and uh, I'm going to get that tied in here and i uh, Normally I would do that before the dubbing. It really doesn't matter. Um, I've got the dubbing on there, uh, but I, I'm gonna tie that in. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do a little bit of a pin trap. I'm gonna pull that back. I'm gonna tie it up. Okay, I still got my noodle on here. I'm gonna slide that back down. And then I'm gonna come back down. Okay, down to the bottom and that's about where I'm gonna begin so I'm gonna tuck that material there and now I'm gonna just work back up body I'm just gonna try to get a nice taper okay if I see a bear a little bit of a weak spot there a little thin spot rather um, so that's kind of the shape that we're looking for I'm uh, just going to try to trim some of those fuzzies off. I think the buggier you make these, the better. But um, again, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my uh, rotary feature here. And I'm going to start by wrapping the tinsel one way. And then I'm going to counter rib with the thread. And uh, whoop, I just realized I'm using the thread first. That's not what I want to do. Try that again, Jeff. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna use the tinsel and uh, I try to keep the thread in my material clip to keep that out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna rib the fly. Okay, that way. And uh, one of the things you wanna do here when you're tying material off, just keep in mind, really one good turn is gonna is gonna hold that uh, but I'm gonna put another one in and then one behind and that that is it otherwise you can really build some bulk up in there and that's it for the tinsel now I'm going to actually put this back on the cradle and now I'm gonna counter rib with my thread to protect that tinsel you can use um, you can use like 6X uh, as well if you would prefer to use 6X, but I find that the thread works pretty well uh, to protect that tinsel. 
and uh, you just wrap that back up and again the same thing here you're going to tie that thread off one two and then one in front all right so the last step is your whip finish and I, again i'm just going to put a tiny little bit of uh, crazy glue here not a lot just enough to get that uh, to hold and then i'm going to do a whip finish and there you go step that off and uh, you've got the uh, the sexy waltz worm uh, this is just a great all-around fly um, i i will tie this in a variety of colors uh, you, Harris mask is is I believe what the original waltz worm uh, was was called the original waltz worm is more of a cigar shape um, but tying these in a euro style uh, I've been tying them and I've seen them tied uh, just with uh, that natural taper starting at the bead and down and again I don't know what fish uh, believe this is I, I guess it represents a, a lot of different things but it just looks buggy you can tie it in just about any dubbing that you have, and uh, I think I think you're gonna catch fish with it. Um, again, you can put a uh, I'll, I'll I'll see a, a hot spot in the back where uh, people will use maybe orange or some type of fluorescent uh, thread, and then snip that off almost like you would uh, with a blowtorch. Um, I'll see the, the collar, but this one, uh, I leave the flash alone and then I keep the tan in there, uh, up at the head. So, uh, these are going to be going out, uh, to a customer, uh, that I just, uh, received an order on Etsy from. So I've been working on these tonight and thought I'd do a video. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have not subscribed, please do. There's going to be lots more videos coming. And, uh, if you haven't checked out troutstrike.com, I encourage you to do so. So, uh, Appreciate you watching, and uh, as always, make sure you're getting out on the water.